Okay. So uh, we are starting now the Cheyenne uh, presentation and demo. Uh, I've uh, prepared a few uh, uh, jokes for ice breaking, but uh, due to technical issues, uh, we had uh, uh, some time to break the ice, so I will skip the jokes and start the presentation <laughs> directly. Uh, so, uh, I'm uh, Nenad Rakosevic, uh, well known at, uh, as uh, Doc Kimball uh, by the rebel community. And uh, I'm from French, as my uh, accent uh, suggests. Um, I'm programming since a long, uh, a long time, uh, more than 25 years, in fact. Uh, doing a lot of things, but mainly in C and uh, various basic uh, languages and flavors. But mostly since 10 years uh, working with uh, Rebel, uh, which is my main uh, language and uh, programming language and main tool. I'm also uh, recently doing quite a lot of... Uh, how, how old are you now? 40. Okay, so you started programming at 15? Yes. A bit, uh, a bit late, but uh, I was 17, I think. Ah, did you start at so Amiga? 16. Or? I started with um, a Sinclair uh, okay. ZX81. <laughs> Why the black level box? Yes, exactly. Uh, so, and I switched uh, two or three years later. I switched on. Uh, Amiga 500. Uh, and you immediately started programming on the Sinclair? I uh, started immediately programming uh, in uh, BASIC mm -hmm. uh, and a uh, few months later starting uh, reverse engineering the ROM of uh, the machine so uh, started an uh, assembler quite uh, rapidly. But I didn't uh, add any books on assembler so I uh, <coughs> learn directly the machine code. I, I learn to program directly with numbers <laughs> instead of mnemonics. Me too. <laughs> so it was quite a good school. I uh, formed, I'm a founder and owner of a software company in Paris since uh, nine years called Softinov, which uh, does uh, software. Uh, web uh, applications and uh, also consulting for big uh, companies. That's why I'm using PowerPoint for this uh, presentation uh, that's uh, influenced by my uh, consulting years. Yeah, you're excused. Thank you. For this year. <laughs> and uh, uh, about my work on uh, Rebel, uh, I did uh, quite a lot of things. Uh, in fact, and I've listed here only the most uh, relevant, I think. Uh, so I'm mainly known for uh, having uh, programmed uh, the first uh, native uh, driver for MySQL the database uh, for Rebel. And uh, I'm, I've also done a few uh, web apps, uh, like the QR code, uh, bug tracking tool that's running on Cheyenne, <coughs> the web server I will talk about during this presentation. And uh, last but not least, I was a longer time Amiga user. And uh, I was also part of the BOS uh, uh, first wave as a registered uh, BOS developer. That's nice. And I own, still own my B box. Did you ever uh, meet uh, Benoit Schilling? Uh, Benoit Schilling? No, never. I was uh, I was uh, part of the third party developers. So okay. my project was uh, building a FTP uh, client uh, for BOS, uh, but I never finished. In fact. <laughs> But uh, you, I really, you really should uh, try Silverboard. 
And by the by the way, we have an unfinished FTP client. Ah, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> if you want to, we can register you as developer. <laughs> well, I already has the the badge, so <laughs> why not? We'll see. So uh, let's go to um, see what's Cheyenne about. Uh, there's a website, uh, there's quite a lot of things on the website since uh, uh, Cheyenne project started uh, three or four years ago. So there's some material uh, on the website, but still lacking some good documentations. Well, wasn't it 2006 already? Maybe uh, Cheyenne started uh, as a uh, HTTPD service, uh, very limited service on the um, a network framework uh, I wrote uh, six or seven years ago called Uniserv. Yeah. So it evolved later in a standalone uh, web server. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe the question uh, you could uh, ask, the first question you would ask uh, is why uh, making uh, yet another web server while there's a lot in the, in the market and uh, uh, a lot of good ones. Uh, the main reason is uh, Ripple uh, required a web server to be able to run online uh, applications. So. Uh, the various solution of interfacing uh, Rebel with uh, Apache uh, weren't very good uh, nor performant. So uh, making a fully native uh, web server in Rebel was the best uh, option. And uh, uh, it was also a good way to put Rebel at test to see if uh, Rebel was uh, capable of uh, doing that and how far uh, could uh, we push uh, his uh, network capabilities. So a few facts uh, about uh, Qian. It's a small uh, web server that doesn't require any installation. Uh, it's just one binary. You just put it somewhere, run it, and you got a web server. It's fully open source, of course. Uh, some interesting facts uh, is that uh, it supports some uh, very nice technologies like uh, fast CGI and web sockets. So we could, uh, I could show you some uh, interesting chat demo with uh, web sockets. Uh. Will it be done now or? Uh, maybe uh, at the end. Will be able. Um, what else? Uh, about performance, maybe just a, a few words about that. Uh, Rebel is, a, is not a compiled language, it's an interpreted language. So you could fear that uh, it could be very slow. In fact, it performed quite well really surprisingly, I would say, well, uh, it does at least as well as other uh, web server coded in uh, interpreted languages, like uh, Mongrel that runs on uh, Ruby. Uh, Cheyenne was even much more faster than uh, Mongrel during uh, a few years, uh, because so Mongrel was running on the... Sorry, the, the, uh, how do you spell it? Mo Mongrel? Mongrel. How do you it's yeah. it's yeah. right. Oh, there the left there. Yeah. It's the the main uh, web server I think from uh, Ruby. So Ruby. Yeah. Uh, so Mongrel was running with a multi-threaded uh, model for networking, and uh, this wasn't very scalable nor uh, very fast. And they switched uh, recently to uh, even driven model like Cheyenne is. So now the performance should be very uh, similar. Cheyenne is very uh, responsive. It, it reminds me of the, the BOS and syllable uh, models because uh, we've had cases where the surfer was 
fully loaded with some runaway process, 100% CPU load, and it didn't seem to, to, to make the website slower at all. Well, uh, Cheyenne is uh, responsive, uh, and it's uh, only because it's running on an event driver uh, model. And multiple processes? No, one main process with uh, one work, single work, thread. Worker process. Uh, uh, serving all the static uh, content. The worker process pre-fork model uh, is here only for dynamic uh, pages. Oh, the, 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 main, the main process is doing all the static. The main, the main process is doing uh, all the simple work of serving the static uh, uh -huh. content. And it's very good at, uh, at that because it's even driven and uh, using non uh, uh, blocking uh, IO uh, sockets. So, this is uh, an overview uh, of uh, the different parts and layers of uh, GN. The uh, important thing here is to look at the two different passes, uh, one in green that uh, represents the static uh, serving, uh, static request serving pass, and the red one which re represents the pass took by uh, dynamic uh, request. So as uh, I was just explaining, uh, static uh, parts are served directly by the main process while uh, all the CGI and uh, RSP uh, scripts are processed by worker, uh, a worker uh, process. So this, is, uh, this pool of process is required to be able to uh, execute um, different scripts at the same time knowing that Rebel doesn't support multi-threading at all. So we, I had to do it that way, to make it uh, scalable. Um, uh, also uh, worth mentioning part is the extension modules. In fact, Cheyenne is conceived as an empty shell, just uh, processing the HTTP protocol, but doing nothing. All the work is done inside the extension modules. And this is similar to the way Apache works. So uh, in the next slide, uh, I did a, a drawing showing how these extension modules uh, are running. So this is the architecture, the internal architecture of uh, the request pipeline, which is uh, the art of Cheyenne, and is, it, it is also the art of uh, the Apache web server. So how does this thing work? Uh, it's not very complicated. It just happens here. So an incoming request. Uh, pass through this pipeline, generating events at each uh, step. These events can... Oh, first I should mention the modules. Uh, this represents the, the extension modules that are plugged in, are plug in uh, Cheyenne. In the order of uh, loading. Each of these modules can implement one or many, uh, several of these events. So catch the events and do some processing on the request. Then letting the request or the event pass through for the next module or uh, stopping it and uh, sending the event back. And the request uh, continues uh, is passed through the through the pi pipeline. So this this looks very abstracted, but in fact is 
quite s simple uh, architecture in term in a ori uh, object oriented uh, term uh, this could be an interface that this uh, uh, that the module class implements and these are instances of this class of the module class that implementing this interface you simply add another module you can add any new modules to extend the uh, processing capabilities of Cheyenne or to change uh, or modify the way some of the other modules are working so you have a complete control with this uh, matrix of uh, events you have so a complete control of what the interface is in fact the request pipeline uh, the the, the interface to the modules is the yes absolutely uh, uh, the interface uh, the each uh, event here uh, correspond to a function in a module or a method and uh, it gets as uh, argument the request object so it can modify the request object uh, as he wants mm -hmm. I will have to write uh, such a model uh, module someday for, uh, for our CMS uh, Kai uh, wrote, uh, I think it was you, you wrote, uh, who rewrote uh, one of... Uh, no, I... Uh, uh, you adapted the... the I, uh, I, I, uh, I made some fixes for it for Unix. Yes. So I, I, have, done, right. I have been in the code, yes. But I have to do a, a, com a complete module uh, someday for our CMS. Yes, that's possible. That's... Uh, easy way to get in the guts of Cheyenne yeah. and extend its uh, capabilities. I'm using uh, fast CGI now. Mm -hmm. I suppose a module will make it uh, a little faster. There's always uh, uh, already a fast CGI module, so yeah. you can already talk to a fast yeah. CGI server. But I, I think uh, uh, a specific module for, for CMS would be even faster. Uh, maybe. Because if you do fast CGI, you still read uh, the file for the CGI. Uh, it depends on the configuration. Oh. Not. Uh, it depends. Yeah, but you are do always doing context switches uh, for the communication. Uh, yes. So but if you put it in a, in a module, you. you uh, no, if you want you really uh, you do not have to communicate between two processes anymore it's just uh, function calls uh, yes but uh, there's also some restriction here in this module we, these modules lives in uh, Cheyenne main process so they have to be very fast yeah. and non -blo not blocking uh -huh. mm -hmm. so to be able to do long uh, running tasks they just have to defer their job to uh, work a process. Oh, so rather it's not how to try that? No. Okay. So you have to do multiprocessing and, mm -hmm. uh, and transfer the job to another process. Yeah, Re Re Rebel 2 is not. It's, uh, it's being implemented for Rebel 3. Rebel yeah, 3 is uh, still not uh, multi-threaded. Uh, you can run a thread, but uh, the um, Communication, synchronization, uh, primitives and uh, semantic yeah. rules are not defined. Uh, it's, 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 half, it's only half implemented. Yes. At the moment. So, uh, Leonard, do I understand it that if you uh, add another module, then uh, the the method support URL translate, those are all uh, need fast stuff, do they? No. It's extensible, the, the, the Yes, uh, if you add another module uh, and put it here, it will receive all the events it registered for. Yeah. So if you, if you uh, registered for, if you implement URL translate, uh, you will receive the event here in your module. Yeah, only if those, but if you want you to change the way the other modules are processing this, you can ask Cheyenne to load your module before the other. So we'll, you will be the first one to get the event mm -hmm. and eventually do something with it before the other gets a chance to catch it. 
Or should I ask kind of dependencies? Yes. Okay, cool. So that's a bit... Uh, so you can, if you think this module is more important than the other... Absolutely. When you load uh, the module, you can, for each event, for each implemented event, you can declare a priority, okay. which is first, uh, last, or normal, which means I don't care. Put it uh, where you want. So, uh, how to serve some uh, content uh, from Cheyenne? Uh, you need some configuration. So, one of the main reason, one of the first reason I wrote uh, Cheyenne uh, beyond just uh, testing report was to have a nice small web server with a uh, Wii web panel. I wanted some, something uh, simple to set up and uh, to configure uh, because uh, Apache's uh, configuration file is a big mess and I didn't want to spend an hour to read the hundreds of command lines in a config file to know how to set up my web server and to do something simple and uh, easy. So that was one of my first wishes. Uh, unfortunately, it's still not there because I didn't have the time to uh, build it. And also, I'm very <coughs> terrible at uh, designing uh, GUIs, like uh, most of programmers. So uh, for now, there's a placeholder, there's a configuration file like uh, Apache, but much smaller and much simpler. Um, this file, this configuration file, uh, uh, was an interesting experiment in uh, building uh, a dialect, uh, a Ripple dialect, uh, with uh, extension capabilities. So each module that we've seen can define and extend the configuration di dialect directly. And uh, about serving uh, content, you can serve static content up to 2 gigabytes without any problem and without disturbing the server. Mm -hmm. So you can, for example, uh, serve several uh, 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 big movies without uh, much uh, performance impact. And another Rebel 2 limitation, 2 gigabytes. 2 gigabytes is the limitation of the integer data type in Rebel, which is a signed uh, type, so 32 by a bit, so that's around 2 gigabytes. Um, so if you have a website which is smaller than 16K, it would be much more cache. faster. It would be self, but uh, loaded in memory in, uh, in a cache. Yeah. And uh, next time it will be uh, served directly from memory. Yeah, so if the it is fast download is very important for you, you can try to make the website smaller than 16K. No, and not the website, the web one file. It's yeah, file. Okay, but it's a file limitation. Per yeah, file but limitation. But if your website is like a file, like an HTML file, then no problem. Then then it would be extra fast. Uh, if it's uh, less than uh, 16K, uh, it will be faster. Okay. It will be self faster. Of course, you can tweak that in the source code. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and also, yes, to worth mentioning, uh, the various uh, classical ways to produce dynamic contact content. Uh, SSI is not much used uh, now, but uh, it used to be a very simple and nice way to um, put uh, static content parts together uh, to factorize uh, static code. For example, to when you do a website, a static website with the uh, same header, same footer, you'd like to extract it from each page 
and uh, include it. So that's what, what SSI is uh, mainly about. CGI, that's the old way of uh, generating uh, uh, dynamic content, and RSP as is the main way in Cheyenne to generate main, uh, dynamic content by uh, using a templating, templating system like uh, PHP or GSP or ASP. There's a lot of uh, systems all working pretty much the same. And there are also a possibility to connect to external fast CGI uh, server like PHP. So you can easily inter interface with uh, PHP and uh, serve PHP applications. So uh, a little focus on uh, RSP scripting uh, works like other systems with uh, the classic delimiters in the templates. Uh, I think in PHP it's using a question mark uh, instead of a percent. Uh, there's a rich API, uh, about uh, 15, uh, 50 functions, I think, uh, which are grouped by objects. The classical uh, requests, response, session object uh, used and uh, proposed in every other uh, similar frameworks. Uh, we can click should work on the API. This is the, okay, not working. <laughs> Next time. Uh, the API is uh, fully documented online, so it's usable. Um, fast concurrent execution, yes. Uh, RSP templates and code are compiled to ripple code before execution and the resulting code is cached in memory. So the first time you're calling a RSP, it pass through this process and uh, later each new, on each new hit uh, you're getting a good speed boost because it's directly compiled in ripple and served from memory. Uh, there's also the classical uh, session handling uh, support. Uh, session, uh, session is uh, used to uh, solve the HTTP uh, stateless uh, issue. So to be able to track user actions uh, between uh, several pages. So session is maintained by uh, cookie or URL or post data. Just have to pass uh, uh, the correct uh, key. Uh, session context uh, is an object where you can uh, store data, and data uh, this this data will be uh, passed from one process to another. So you don't have to care about uh, where it is. You just know that this data is uh, stored in memory and will be always available to your RFP code. Uh, session management has two modes. Uh, a manual mode, uh, like in PHP, I think, where you start it and stop it manually. And the second mode, which is the web app mode, uh, um, where the Cheyenne directly uh, controls everything. So you don't have to care about how to start or when to stop it. Cheyenne does uh, all the job for you. So, uh, focus now on uh, these web applications. Uh, the main uh, concept is a container. So you can define an application container, which is uh, mainly a file hierarchy. Uh, and in this uh, 
folders you can define you have uh, several spaces with different access rights so you have a private space where you can put every file you don't want to be seen served by uh, Cheyenne uh, typically uh, back-end code uh, libraries or data configuration file uh, you have a protected space uh, where you can uh, where your code is executed but controlled by uh, Cheyenne and access can be restricted and you have a public space where you can put anything uh, there and it will be access, uh, accessible uh, by uh, all users uh, as an application container is, it also has the property of uh, producing events so when the application is first uh, run uh, it uh, rises um, it raised the application start event and uh, when the first station is uh, open you got the on session start event and for each page uh, serve RSP page serve you have also two hooks to for the start of the page and at the end of the page that's a, a nice way uh, to implement filters for example uh, input filters or output filters for the pages how is uh, the, the file hierarchy uh, designated? I, I haven't made a web app yet, but uh, you have to uh, de assign a folder, don't you? Yes, you have to... But uh, then the entire web app is in that folder, so then where are the private protected and public parts? You have to assign, uh, you have to map a pass, a URL pass, to a, a folder, any folder you want. And inside that folder, you can uh, define, you, you have to uh, create, uh, sorry, uh, a private folder, a, name, a folder named private, another folder named public. Okay. Everything that is not in these two folders is folding the protected uh, category. Okay. So it's very simple. Yeah, I, I, know, I haven't seen that yet, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll see that in the demo. Mm -hmm. if I Okay, so application services. Uh, like I said before, application uh, web applications um, can manage automatically uh, the session for you, the user session. So you don't have to care much about that. But uh, they can also do another thing, is to manage the uh, authentication uh, state of the user. So. Uh, in the session context, there's a flag uh, that indicates if the user is authenticated or not. And uh, this, this way is a way to uh, protect the resources. If the flag is not set, the user can't access any resources inside the scope of the web uh, application. So it's a nice way to manage uh, the authentication uh, and also a good way to protect uh, all the code because you got a redirection if uh, if uh, an access is uh, made uh, while not uh, logged in. Okay. So this is the last slide before uh, the demo. <coughs> There's a lot of features in Cheyenne. In this presentation, I just made the focus on a few things uh, that are important. But uh, there's really a lot of other features. Uh, uh, one uh, interesting feature that uh, not known by much people is that Cheyenne uh, has a, a service, uh, offer a service on local host is that it allows uh, a ripple console to connect to it through a little uh, network client which is uh, the Cheyenne uh, archive and uh, you can access uh, directly in live all the Cheyenne code 
So your console, you have a console, a readable console interface, but uh, the code is run on Cheyenne, main process. Mm -hmm. So you can walk through all the objects, all the values, everything inside the memory of Cheyenne live. You can see the connection happen and so the effect Cheyenne mm -hmm. itself is scriptable. Yeah. Uh, Cheyenne is an interpreted yeah. script. So as such you can uh, connect to it and uh, examine it and see it running in real time almost. Like a, like a small talk image. Almost. This is nice because it uh, allows you to make uh, things like uh, odd patches. I uh, had once to uh, odd patch uh, and uh, uh, a client, a customer, uh, using Cheyenne uh, for a website and he had some issues. Uh, so I reproduced the issues at uh, my office and uh, find a way to patch the code and apply the code live without restarting the server. Mm -hmm. So I logged on this server, I logged on, uh, remotely via SSH, then from localhost on this machine I logged inside Cheyenne and I applied the patch. Mm -hmm. I need to learn that. <laughs> That's nice to mess up uh, things. <laughs> like you have to be very, very careful when doing that. Uh, another interesting thing for Rebel uh, programmers is the embedded uh, mode. So you can uh, take Cheyenne and inside of uh, instead of uh, running it uh, as a standalone server, you can just run it uh, inside any Rebel event loop. So, for example. Uh, uh, Rebel view graphic uh, loop will uh, will fit, and uh, you could add Cheyenne inside the view application and have your view code running, and Cheyenne serving uh, pages. And there's also a special API provided for that, so you don't have to. Uh, especially serve content from disk, you can serve content directly from your application by publishing uh, code directly. So this API works like uh, mapping some URLs on your object and function directly. So you just output some HTML, for example, from, from your functions and uh, you got a web server running inside your uh, application. So a nice way to extend some existing application, for example. Another thing that uh, I, uh, another feature I um, don't remember seeing in other web server, but maybe it exists. Uh, it's uh, an upload uh, API for clients. So what's that? Uh, when you do file uploading on a web server, uh, often you want to uh, notify the user of the progressing of the file uploading. Usually uh, this is done by uh, finding workarounds because the HTTP protocol doesn't uh, allow to get such information. So workarounds usually is to uh, embed a small flash application, open a socket to the server, and uh, upload your files through that socket instead of doing it the right way through HTTP and through the normal stream of the browser. Another alternative is to use a Java applet to do the same thing that like uh, Flash does. So that's a bit silly because file uploading is supported by uh, <coughs> HTTP protocol. Uh, but uh, you, the server, the protocol doesn't say that the server will give you some information back. So I've extended Cheyenne to be able to uh, serve some uh, information about that, some statistics about that in real time. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple method. When you upload a file in a HTML form, you just make a Ajax request to Cheyenne in a special URL 
and you ask for a token, an upload token, Cheyenne gives you one back, then during the file uploading, you just send Ajax request to Cheyenne with that token, and Cheyenne will, say, will give you back a small response containing uh, two integers, indicating how much uh, bytes have been received and how much bytes are expected. I think uh, Freddie digs that. <laughs> he, he knows like he's had to implement that many times. The, uh, do other web servers don't have this, this functionality? I've never seen this function in other web servers, so I don't know if it's supported uh, by maybe some obscure modules in Apache uh, does that, but I've never seen that uh, so the before the the standard for for the Hathaway request is the uh, is there, but the answer is isn't except for this. Uh, the the HTTP specification yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doesn't say anything <coughs> about uh, getting information back when you upload a file. It it's even worse than that when your web server a uh, web uh, browser wants to upload a file uh, from within your JavaScript code. You don't even know the size of the file you, the user is uploading. So you can't display any useful information. You have to use workarounds like Flash or Java to get information from the server, telling him, asking him what, are, what is the size of the file, how to do, uh, etc. So, uh, you mean you can send to the server the size of the file, or, uh, or the, the I server don't know can send flash, it to the I don't browser. know if, uh, if he's able to uh, get the size of the file directly on the client side, or if he needs to uh, ask the server for. Uh, probably he can get it uh, on the client side. Uh, in Cheyenne, you don't have to mess uh, with these things. You just, uh, you're using JavaScript, uh, do uh, using an Ajax uh, request, you ask for a token, then you ask uh, during a, a iterative uh, calls, you ask how much, how much, how much, and you can display a nice progress bar, for example, in real time. Also, that's quite cool. Uh, also, cool things, but still uh, experimental. Uh, uh, like uh, Carl, I like to rebuild existing things. <laughs> well, because well, me too. I'm, I'm building this uh, Linux distro, simple server. Because I'm and not, I'm not uh, satisfied with the existing tools, or it just uh, takes me each time too much uh, maintenance uh, time. Uh -huh. So uh, I uh, rewrote a cron-like uh, scheduler. I, I, have, I haven't put Chrome on my uh, Linux distro yet, so I, I hope to avoid that by simply using Cheyenne. Ah, I, uh, <laughs> I had too much uh, issues with uh, configuring uh, Chrome uh, jobs, oh. and uh, so I... I have uh, not 40% energy, so I'm going to So I uh, rewrote my own uh, scheduler using a nice... Uh, dialect of uh, rebel uh, but it's a bit experimental because it can't uh, schedule jobs uh, uh, for more than uh, 23 four days so I need to extend it and uh, rewrite some of the part of it to allow it to go unlimited for the scheduling that's why it's still in the uh, experimental uh, category another very, very useful, but very complex things to set up properly is a SMTP uh, server for uh, sending emails from your web applications. Usually you have to deploy something like uh, Postfix or what was the name of uh, the other one, Q Qmail. Yeah. Uh, and before that you have to use the probably most awful piece of software send, ever written, SendMail. Send SendMail, which is the ugliest, awful <laughs> piece of software. I had a look at the configuration file once, and then I the immediately decided to use... The configuration file uses uh, its own dialect, yeah. uh, 
Uh, M4. Yeah, but, M4. but you can now, for example, you know, <coughs> the configuration file syntax is uh, Turing complete. Ah, yes, absolutely. So it, so it is, is our bearded Unix guy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's right. But I uh, put the cam camera on his beard. <laughs> but I uh, uh, try to avoid uh, sent me the plague, so... Uh, yes, that's, uh, uh, that's really awful. Uh, I mean, such complexity for such a simple task is... Uh, mm -hmm in something I uh, can't uh, stand. So I rewrote my own MTA. That's what uh, the proper name is, a mail transfer agent. So then you can send email without... So you, you can send the email directly from Cheyenne, mm -hmm. from uh, your RSP code in Cheyenne. You can send email and it passes through uh, the MTA agent that will uh, do the same things <coughs> as the postfix and other MTA agent. It will just uh, test the connection, uh, try to send the email. If it doesn't work, it will retry uh, three times. If it doesn't work, it saves the mail on the disk, wait 10 or 15 minutes, and retry again. But 8-bit, uh, does, does that mean that it, it doesn't support Unicode? No, uh, this is uh, the current limitation. Uh, of uh, this implementation, I support only the uh, more recent RFC for email, which are um, encoding characters on 8 byte, uh, 8 bit. Excuse me. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, it doesn't work with all the uh, SMTP server, oh. which are expecting for only 7 bit yeah. email is such all that. Uh, it doesn't uh, fully support uh, ANSI codes, so only ASCII up to uh, 128 uh, characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to add support for 7-bit uh, encoding to be able to have a fully working SMTP server. So it works very well with a uh, recent uh, server like uh, Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, but uh, if you try with uh, other mm, uh, server, it might not work. So it the mail will be rejected uh, by the server because it doesn't uh, support the 8-bit uh, encoding. Mm -hmm. And uh, last notes, last feature uh, for Windows user. Uh, is something uh, really important in, use, in Windows uh, space is the uh, anti-services uh, support. So the ability to run Cheyenne in service mode. And this is uh, achieved in Cheyenne uh, using a system tray icon menu where you can switch from one mode to another uh, in one click. And this is also something uh, not available in uh, Apache, I guess. In Apache, it's more you have to install it first in the service mode, then you can start and stop it from the menu. In Cheyenne, you don't have to install anything. You just run it and you switch from one mode in another in one click. Okay, I think it's the presentation is over. I have uh, prepared. Uh, a um, little uh, demonstration using coding to show how to call the RSP. So I don't know if uh, we have time for that. Uh, it's okay. Okay. So this will, this will uh, be, I think, very interesting to Freddy, who does uh, a lot of web uh, pro uh, website programming. Um, I just need to find the right folder. Okay. So I've prepared uh, a folder for this uh, demo. So I've downloaded here a binary version of uh, Cheyenne, but uh, you can run Cheyenne in uh, using from Ripple console it will work exactly the same because uh, binary file generation in uh, Rebel using the SDK 
uh, it's just a matter of wrapping a script with a ripple kernel. So running Cheyenne from console in, uh, and from sources or running it uh, from a binary, it's exactly the same thing. So on Windows, you can run it one way or another without any differences. On uh, Linux and Unix system, uh, I've found uh, uh, after a lot of years of uh, practicing with uh, Cheyenne on such configuration that it's m much more easier to use it in a binary form rather than a source form. I've also created a little configuration file that I will show you. Okay. I don't know if the font size is maybe too small, so no, it's fine. It's fine. Maybe for the video, it's, right. it's probably not readable on the video, but there's not much we can do about it. I can they they zoom in or something. Yes, I should be able. To. No, I think it's readable. Okay, so uh, configuration file is. Uh, split in uh, several sections. Uh, uh, there's a module section which lists the modules, the extension modules uh, that will be loaded and the order of loading these modules. Uh, a global section which uh, contains uh, options that apply uh, globally to Xi'an, like for example the ports, the listening ports, that's an interesting feature. You can see that uh, Cheyenne will listen at the same time on these three ports without requiring several instances or even several processes. The same single threaded process will uh, listen and serve the content through these three ports. Uh, then a few binding from the dynamic modules to a file extension. Uh, there's also a persist command that will just instruct Cheyenne to save on disk uh, uh, RSP sessions data and uh, uh, the mail queue uh, when it quits. By default it's not saved so uh, this option forces it to save. Uh, worker libs allow you to uh, allows you to specify uh, a list of uh, library of scripts uh, that will be loaded automatically in the background uh, on each worker process. Uh, databases specify mappings that could be used in RSP code. Uh, to uh, map these words to connection, so to database. This uh, mapping enables Cheyenne to manage for you all the opening, closing, reopening of uh, database connections. So you just have to send a SQL uh, request directly using this mapping word uh, without caring about the connection, if the connection is open or not open. Cheyenne uh, does the job for you. And uh, using also an interesting thing to note, uh, using the uh, process, uh, processes uh, pool of workers, you get a natural pooling of connection. So if you, Cheyenne usually but in the default configuration starts with four worker process for processing RSP code. So you got you get there four connection to MySQL, for example, database. And you have a natural pooling of connections. So you don't have uh, to manage several connections to make it scalable. The number of connections scales with Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. with the number of process you specify. And the last section of the configuration file uh, is for the content. 
So, and the virtual host. Here we have uh, the default virtual host, which is act as a kind of catch-all virtual host. So by default, all requests, all requests will be uh, served using this configuration. But you can have your domain.com website here and make your virtual, uh, virtual host configuration here. You can also have, for example, here a sub 